this video, I will discuss some of the specific wastes and ways to improve the process through a lean mindset, lean cultural elements, and lean tools. I will discuss how this leads to a highly innovative culture and organization, which might just be part of your mission statement or your quality policy. Well, the key to ongoing success and staying ahead of the competition is ongoing quick innovation, turning over designs rapidly, and the key to this is a process that allows it to happen. Now, the whole premise was to do a better job up front, and it will pay dividends in the long run. A lean mindset will help you to get there by driving out the waste and the old traditional department-focused command and control processes of the past that just don't work. So from a cost perspective, I'd like to demonstrate this through what's called the quality lever. They would call the combination of competitive benchmarking and concept selection Nimawashi. So I think it's a good idea to give you a demonstration of what a visual project board might actually look like. This process also eliminates the traditional reliance on the typical phase gate approach to development that so many companies employ. One project at a time to avoid what I call brain changeover. Their work is all mental. It's not tangible like in the manufacturing world. Now how does visual management relate to design and development? Well, we first must look at the wastes involved. Well, our design and developers can learn from the manufacturing world of Lean that visual, visual management can be very handy and very useful, especially since we focus on, on expectations for, versus actual results. The green projects or the green tasks are arranged in here by due date, and the engineers can themselves pull from the top the next project if and when they have a, a time opening. Now let's talk about the relationship of Kaizen events to product and process development. Let's now talk about the relationship between standard work and product and process development. It was APQP, Advanced Product Quality Planning. It was based on designing and developing products and their related processes simultaneously, thus slashing months off the overall development time. Today, APQP is fast being replaced by the term or acronym LPPD, or Lean Product and Process Development, which is still based on the same principles of APQP, but provides us with specific lean tools or ways to design, develop, and innovate efficiently and effectively. And there are no conflicts between what ISO says and what LPPD says. LPPD is just an enhancement. It gives us the how to do all the what's in an ISO 9001 based business management system. And in the work cell, there's two assemblers and they're assembling that amount of product that's required for that day. The next day, demand picks up. It doubles. We need to put four people in that work cell. And so each person's standard work is about half the content that it was the day before. Risk over time should be measured and monitored, and as the project progresses and gets closer to project launch, risk should decrease. So how about one piece flow, and how does that relate to the design process, and why would we even venture into that area? Well, the purpose is to reduce the waste of inventory of projects, and thus the wait time. Now for some major or critical projects, it may make sense to co-locate product and process design engineers together, along with other key individuals, perhaps production people or quality, to encourage one piece flow and immediate problem solving and resolution as they work to reduce handoffs. So think of the engineers, think of them working and constantly getting interrupted with special requests. No wonder designs get pushed back so often. Now the benefits of a 3P event is, is the rapid testing of many ideas and the embedding of lean manufacturing principles into the process and product design process. 3P, or the production preparation process, seeks to meet customer requirements by starting with a clean product development slate to rapidly create and test potential product and process designs that require the least time, the least amount of material, and the least capital resources. Now, what about Nimawashi? Well, instead of deciding on one design concept early in the process and constantly testing and fixing and redesigning that one concept, the approach should be one of creating and developing many different alternatives up front. Lean is applicable to any process in the business world, and it's especially applicable 
in the design and development world because this process is rarely studied and looked at to see the inherent waste. Design and development is a process, just like assembly or manufacturing, and as such will have plenty of waste in the process. It takes a person who can think conceptually and see how virtually every single lean tool and cultural aspect is applicable to product and process development.